Hey everyone, Tech Steve here. Today we're going to take a look at this TU690T. Now we'll tell you, TU comes back from 2020 models. So the last thing that we've seen here in the United States was a TU7000 and a TU8000. Ironically, the following year, we did get an AU8000, but we didn't get the AU7000 or 9000. It was only sold abroad. And then the year after that, we haven't seen any BU series. So what that means is that this TV might be rebranded from the TU7000, but doesn't make it a bad TV. On this video, I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know about it. We're gonna do some gaming. I'm gonna let you hear the audio. We're gonna hook it up to a computer and a lot more. So sit back and relax and let's get started. And before we get into all the details of this TV, I would tell you that this is a 43 inch. It is available all the way up to 75 inch and I'll leave that in the description below. Plus all these TVs are VA panels. Now at the top here has like this titanium gray finish to it. Around the sides, there's like a thick border and the feet at the bottom just snaps right into place. In the center of the TV, you're gonna find a Samsung logo and right below that, you have this press button that you can get access to your channels, volume, as well as the sources, but you can't control any of the smart features. Now looking at this TV from the side view, it is a little bit thicker than a newer, thinner Samsung television and it uses an edge-lit VA panel. On the back of it, there's some screw holes so you can mount it on the wall very easily and then when it comes to inputs, you are very limited. At the top, there's a power connection. There's only one USB. There's a fiber optic output and two HDMIs. I will tell you that one of the HDMIs is for eARC, so it will do Dolby Atmos pass-through, and you have an ATSC tuner. Additional to that, it does have an Ethernet input, plus it does have Wi-Fi. So you're probably thinking to yourself, this TV only has two HDMI inputs. Well, I'll tell you, I made a video on this adapter from O-Ray, and it allows you to have four inputs, send it over to your television so you can use one input for all those devices. So just something to consider, but you can always buy a more expensive TV that has more inputs. Now, if you didn't know, Samsung is the number one sold television in the world, but how well does their entry level television perform? And look at this white uniformity test. Actually, it did pretty good. If you look in the corners, you don't see much vignetting. Also, the contrast is really popping. You can see in the center here that everything is giving you a lot of layers of grayscale. And I will tell you that Samsung's known to give you really good motion. In fact, look how smooth this picture is compared to some other videos I've done if you've been following my channel. Now, before we get into some gaming, let's check out the input lag. So what I did is I put the TV into the gaming mode by using the home setup. We have our input lag tester here, and then we're gonna just touch it right here to this light. Now this TV is getting 9.7 milliseconds, which is very respectful for a television because anything below 30 milliseconds is actually considered pretty fast. Now we're in the Xbox settings, and if I go over here, you can see that it can do 4K at 60 hertz. It does not support 120 hertz, and it doesn't support Dolby Vision, and no Samsung supports Dolby Vision, just so you guys know. Now, if I go back in here, I can try to override it just to see if we can get some higher resolutions. I will tell you that it will support 1440 at 60p, so it's good for PlayStation. And I will tell you that the maximum range that this TV can support is 60 hertz, but it will take in 120 hertz signal if you drop down to 1080p. And as a side note, it will allow 24 frames for movies. It has auto low latency. It does not support VRR. And as mentioned earlier, it will support SDR and HDR content. I will tell you that you can hook up a keyboard and mouse two different ways. You can use a Bluetooth that's built in and you can use headphones with that as well. Or you can take something like this type of keyboard and mouse and just use the little dongle that comes with it. But what does it look like on a computer? So I pulled up some editing software on this TV and it looks pretty good. Everything's sharp, detailed. Here's what it looks like on a cell sheet. I can also go down here and look at the chart. I can look at the graphics. But again, for a computer monitor, it's not too bad. Now, when it comes to audio, I would tell you that this TV has 10 watts by two. It is not earth-shaking sound, but it's good enough if you're gonna put it up on a wall in a business, kid's room, garage, or something like that. And it has a few audio settings, but 
I didn't find any kind of cinema mode or anything like that if you're watching movies. Now, when it comes to sound modes, you have standard, and if you click on it, you have adaptive sound where it adjusts the sound based off of the content you're watching, and it has amplified, but it doesn't have any type of movie sound settings or anything like that. <laughs> Next, we're gonna go over some of the features that this TV has to offer. And this part might be a little bit longer, but you can always fast forward through it. But down here, we have what they call Samsung TV Plus and Live TV. Now, I hooked up an antenna onto it just so I can show you guys the TV tuner and some of the features that it can do. Now, when using the Samsung TV Plus, all your over-the-air antenna content will be at the bottom here. And the great thing is that Samsung has a guide. Over here in the corner, it gives you all the shortcuts so you can go directly to channels. Now I did look and see if there was a recording option, but it wasn't. But what you can do is you can find a program on the guide, you can press on it, and then you can schedule a time when it views. So if you watch the TV, it'll pop up on the screen that that program has came on. And Samsung also has the SmartThings application. I can use this keypad to get through all the different menus. I can hit this one to get to your house or inputs. You can play pause. You can also turn off the power and you can control the volume right there as well. Now, the great thing about this application is that you can connect it to your Google or Alexa system to do basic features. Now, this TV does use Tizen. Down here, you have your applications. You can search for different things. You have your source. Plus, over here, you have your settings. And if you go down, you get all your different uh, programming that you can watch right away. Some of this is free. Some of it requires you to log into the application. Now, another thing I want to show you guys in this particular TV is the web browser. So in the web browser, you can add some favorites up here at the top. You also can search for different websites. I'm not sure if it will support anything besides HTML5. You also can play files from a thumb drive. I haven't tried the hard drive, but this is what it looks like. From here, you have access to all the files on that that's compatible. And if you want to hit on something like Scenic, you can see that it will create little thumbnails of each thing that you want to play. Now, a lot of you guys also asked me about the internal memory. So inside of the app store under your profile, you can see that it has about four gigs of built-in memory and you can use this to download all your applications that you like. But if you're the type of person who likes to download every application in the app store, they will not fit. Now here's a remote control that comes with it and I know people prefer the one remote, but it has some advantages and disadvantage. One of the disadvantages, it doesn't have the voice commands, but you have a button to go directly to your sources. You also have a number pad if you use the TV tuner, and you have some direct keys like Netflix, Hulu, and Prime Video. Some other benefits is down here, you can get directly to your settings just by pressing that, and you have some hotkeys that pops up in different applications. So overall, this is a decent remote control, but it doesn't have all the frills that you might want. So I hope you guys liked this video so far. And if I in any way gave you any type of information that you enjoyed, go and hit that like button below so I can make more content like this. With that being said, let's talk about the pros and cons of this Samsung TU690T. Now I'm just gonna be generally speaking here. First of all, all the newer models, the 2022 and I'm pretty sure beyond has adjustable feet. So for some people, they might want to have that option. The elephant in the room on this television is two HDMI inputs, so if you use any type of external sources, you are very limited unless you get a selector box like I showed you guys earlier. Another thing, if you guys don't know this, Samsung does not support Dolby Vision whatsoever. They have their own technology called HDR10+, Plus, and that is actually something that they want to move forward with. So if you pull up Disney or any type of app like that, you're never gonna get Dolby Vision on any Samsung television, regardless what you plug into it. Another con for me is that some people don't like this remote control, and I guess you can look at it both ways. For some people, you have the full number pad, and that's gonna be great for you know pulling up your TV channels. It also has a settings button right here that I use all the time, and this remote control is compatible with all the newer Samsung TVs with the IR control but you don't get voice command. So if you want to have any type of voice command on this, you would have to download the SmartThings application, which I showed you guys earlier, and you would need to connect it to the TV and then take that and connect it to Google and Alexa, and you can do some basic features like turn the TV off and on. With that being said, let's talk about the positives. Well, first of all, Samsung's have a really good picture quality. I was very impressed with the picture on this television. And I will tell you that 
if you get a Samsung TV, they're the number one. So even though it doesn't have all these bells and whistles, you're definitely getting that. The motion was good, it was very smooth, so it's gonna be great on movies. I think the gaming mode was really good as well, plus it has low input lag, and this TV does have Apple AirPlay, and it does have a feature where you can uh, send your phones over like Samsung phone and share that screen, so those are some great things for about this television. With that being said, if you guys uh, don't mind, go and subscribe to my channel. I'm Tech Steve, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace! I'm obsessed with you. Thank you.